Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Emma, and we're playing Dragon Age. Okay, so we've got a few things to read right off the bat. <sighs> My favorite. I'm so excited. Or at least they're short. Okay. The weakness of mortal will is the great failing of all the Maker's children. We trade our honor as if it were the cheapest of currency. We do not understand what integrity is, or what it is truly worth. From this ignorance, original sin was born. At some time, each of us has thought, what does it matter if I keep hold of my integrity? I am but one mortal. I am powerless. How blind we all are. The virtue of a single slave destroyed the Tevinter Imperium. The dishonor of one man drove the Maker from our sight. I tell you truly, Nothing but the integrity of our hearts will win the love of the Maker back to us. It is all the power we shall ever possess to change this world for good or ill. Okay. I mean, integrity is a good thing, don't get me wrong. But isn't love also very important? Tolerance, kindness. There was no word for heaven or for earth for sea or sky. All that existed was silence. Then the voice of the Maker rang out, the first word, and his word became all that might be, dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities. And from it made his firstborn, and he said to them, in my image I forge you. To you I give dominion over all that exists. By your will may things be done. Then in the center of heaven, he called forth a city with towers of gold, streets with music for cobblestones, and banners which flew without wind. There he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. The children of the Maker gathered before his golden throne and sang hymns of praise unending, but their songs were the songs of the cobblestones, and they shone with the golden light reflected from the Maker's throne. They held forth the banners that flew on their own, and the voice of the Maker shook the fade saying, In my image I have wrought my firstborn. You have been given dominion over all that exists. By your will all things are done. Yet you do nothing. The realm I have given you is formless, ever-changing. What's wrong with that? And he knew he had wrought amiss. So the Maker turned from his firstborn and took from the Fade a measure of its living flesh and placed it apart from the spirits and spoke to it, saying, Here I decree opposition in all things for earth, sky, for winter, summer, for darkness, light. By my will alone is balance sundered and the world given new life. And no longer was it formless, ever changing, but held fast, immutable, with words for heaven and for earth, sea and sky. At last did the maker from the living world make men, immutable as the substance of the earth, with souls made of dream and idea, hope and fear, endless possibilities. Then the Maker said, To you, my secondborn, I grant this gift. In your heart shall burn an unquenchable flame, all-consuming and never satisfied. From the Fade I crafted you, into the Fade you shall return, each night in dreams, that you may always remember me. And then the Maker sealed the gates of the Golden City, and there he dwelled, waiting to see the wonders his children would create. That's actually kind of interesting. Does that really if not implies, definitely outright states that spirits are considered the firstborn of the Maker. I wonder then how the Chantry justifies its literal demonization of interactions with the Fade and spirits. It's very, I guess, a convenient way for them to also demonize mages. Huh. Those children, the orphan Ferelans, ran off again after we fed them. I wish they'd let us help them. It'd be better than scraping by on the streets of Dark Town. Those Canaria, frightening sort. Demons, the whole lot of them. I do wish the Viscount would have them run off. Or is it compassion that's supposed to, you know, mark your order? It would be most appreciated if you didn't come clomping through here like a herd of cattle. The amount of noise you're making is ridiculous. You could ask nicely. 
There's no need to be demeaning. Is there anything up here? Oh, there was something. Mm -hmm. And more nothing. Okay, so I did know that we need to go. I did read from you guys that we need to go somewhere else. To find quests. I apologize. In the 30th year of the Steel Age, the first Canary ships were sighted off the coast of Parva Lun in the far north, marking the beginning of a new age of warfare. History calls this the First Canary War, but it was mostly a one-sided bloodbath with the Canary advancing far into the mainland. Canary warriors in glittering steel armor carved through armies with ease. Their cannons, the likes of which our ancestors had never seen, reduced city walls to rubble in a matter of seconds. Stories of Canary occupation vary greatly. It is said they dismantled families and sent captives to learning camps for indoctrination into their religion. Isn't that how it works, like, all the time? Those who refused to cooperate disappeared to mines or construction camps. For every tale of suffering, however, there is another of enlightenment driving from something called the Kuhn. This is either a philosophical code or a written text that governs all aspects of Canary life. Perhaps both. One converted Saharan reported pity for those who refused to embrace Akun, as if the conquerors had led him, yeah, to a sort of self-discovery. For all my life, I followed the maker wherever his path led me, he wrote, but in the Kuhn, I have found the means to travel my own path. I really do kind of want to know more about the Kuhn, because we know, I mean, like, Androstianism is, uh, you know, very modeled after Christianity. Any any real monotheism. Well, it depends. Because I don't know a lot about Islam, so I can't really make that claim. But it seems to take a lot of its um, influence from Christianity specifically. Also in the way that uh, it's practiced. It has been said that the most complete way to wipe out a people is not with blades, but with books. Thankfully, a world that had repelled four blights would not easily bow to a foreign aggressor, and so the exalted marches began. The greatest advantage of the Chantry-led force was the Circle of Magi. For all their technology, the Canari appeared to harbor great hatred for magic. What is with this? Faced with cannons, the Chantry responded with lightning and balls of fire. I love how the Chantry have to resort to to appealing the aid of the people that they subjugate and fear and hate the most. I guess they found somebody they feared and hated more. The Canaria armies lacked the sheer numbers of humanity. So many were slain at Marnas Pell on both sides, but the veil is said to be permanently sundered, the ruins still plagued by rest restless corpses. Gross. But each year the Chantry pushed further and further into the Canari lines. Although local converts to the Kuhn proved difficult to return to Andraste's teachings. Let the people practice what they want. By the end of the Storm Age, the Canari were truly pushed back. Ravain was the only human land that retained the Canari religion after being freed, and its rulers attempted to barter a peace. Most human lands signed the Lomarin Accord, accepting the Tevinter Imperium. It is a shaky peace that has lasted to this day. Like, I know, I know I shit on religion a lot. Um, but that by no means uh, indicates that you can't, you can't do you. Like, always do you. Just be kind to others, okay? Religion definitely has a place in the world, and if you use it responsibly, there's no issue. It's when... How do I get down? Oh. It's when you, you use it to hurt other people or, uh, or subjugate others that it's not a good deal, you know? Did we read this? Is this a banner that we're looking at and reading? The amount of sorry I am right now is over 9,000. There was once a tiny fishing village on the Waking Sea that was set upon by the Tevinter Imperium, which enslaved the villagers to be sold in the markets of Minrathus, leaving behind only the old and the infirm. One of the captives was a child in Draste. She was raised in slavery in a foreign land. She escaped, then made the long and treacherous journey back to her homeland alone. She rose from nothing to be the wife of an Alamari warlord. Is this kind of like 
The precursors to the Avar, maybe? The Alamari? Each day she sang to the gods, asking them to help her people who remain slaves into winter. The false gods of the mountains and the winds did not answer her, but the true god did. The maker spoke. He showed her all the works of his hands, the fade. The world and all the creatures therein. He showed her how men had forgotten him, lavishing devotion upon mute idols and demons, and how he had left them to their fate. But her voice had reached him, and so captivated him that he offered her a place at his side, that she might rule all of creation. But Andraste would not forsake her people. She begged the Maker to return, to save his children from the cruelty of the Imperium. Reluctantly, the Maker agreed to give man another chance. Andraste went back to her husband, Mafaroth, and told him that the Maker told him all that the Maker had revealed to her. Together they rallied the Alamari and marched forth against the Mage Lords of the Imperium, and the Maker was with them. The Maker's sword was creation itself, fire and flood, famine and earthquake. This is very Moses-like. Everywhere they went, Andraste sang to the people of the Maker, and they heard her. The ranks of Andraste's followers grew until they were a vast tide washing over the Imperium. And when Mafaroth saw that the people loved Andraste and not him, a worm grew within his heart, gnawing upon it. At last, the armies of Andraste and Mafaroth stood before the very gates of Mrathus. But Andraste was not with them, for Mafaroth had schemed in secret to hand Andraste over to them to Vinter. Which is a douche move, guys. That's your wife. Like, everything else aside, don't do that to your spouse. That's sucky. For this, the Archon would give Mafaroth all the lands to the south of the Waking Sea. And so, before all the armies of the Alamari and of Tevinter, Andraste was tied to a stake and burned while her earthly husband turned his armies aside and did nothing, for his heart had been devoured. But as he watched the pyre, the Archon softened. He took pity on Andraste and drew his sword and granted her the mercy of a quick death. The Maker wept for his beloved, cursed Mafaroth, cursed mankind for their betrayal, and turned once again from creation, taking only Andraste with him. And Our Lady sits still at his side, where she still urges him to take pity on his children. It's always interesting when deities act like humans. Really, he's a good boy. Please give me the strength to find him. Hmm. I want to help all these people, but... Let's go find some people we can actually help. Look at this! Oh, it's mail. Look at all this cool business! What is this? Is this by Hightown? I need to go to the keep, right? I need to go to the keep. So, go to Hightown. That was cool. But yeah. So, I apologize for all this reading, but it is, it is honestly really illuminating. I get to keep. Don't they ask keep? I think it's that way. Because we do have to leave the area to get there. I'm learning a lot. And it's, you know, the lore that I like too. Because I'm really into um, I mean, mostly elven lore. Don't get me wrong. I'm not even going to lie about that. But Move along. I know. But getting to know the world that you're in is very, very interesting. Exit. Maybe that one? Blooming Rose. Why would it? That has to go to Low Town. And that goes to the Chantry. So. Hmm. We'll figure it out. No rush, no worries. We will figure it out. Okay, so hopefully we can actually get some stuff done today. It was really that's gonna be the dwarven district, so it's not actually an exit. Hoping to get some actual stuff done today. Yeah, this is gonna lead us. The refugees were keeping to low town. I'm gonna pretend like you're not trying to be demeaning. 
Okay, so leave area. That's this is gonna take us to low town. This is definitely gonna take us to low town. Up seems good. Hey, I don't think we have actually gone up here. Yeah, this is where I wanna be. Good, good. Okay, let's go explore. Mouse over people. Sorry, people. So we make sure that we. You have to admit, the Gunari haven't done anything. That doesn't mean they'll continue doing nothing. You can't treat people like that. What do they want? That's so sad. Fear and a lack of knowledge. It's the most damning thing. I thought the refugees were keeping to low town. You have to admit, the Gunari haven't done anything. Okay, you only say that. that That's cool. Oh, look, main plot line. Look, <laughs> we found it. Thanks, guys, for all the assistance. I really do appreciate it. Like, it helps us have a better experience, too, I think. Gather your party. <gasps> Aveline! Why can't I have you? We'll go get her. We'll go get her. Messer, please stop kicking the wall. Who are you to talk to me like that, you bloody peasant? The guard will throw you out if you kick that wall one more time. Well. Okay. Hierarchy of the circle. This actually is... Oh, bloody. Okay. It is no simple matter safeguarding ordinary men from mages and mages from themselves. Each circle tower must have some measure of self-government, for it is ever the Maker's will that men be given the power to take responsibility for their own actions, to sin and fail, as well as to achieve the highest grace and glory on our own strength. You, who will be tasked with the protection of the circle, must be aware of its workings. The first enchanter is the heart of any tower. He or she will determine the course of the cir that, that the circle will take, not his circle, that the circle will take. He or she will choose which apprentices may be tested and made full mages, and you will work most closely with him or her. Assisting the first enchant will be the senior enchanters, a small council of the most trusted and experienced magi in the tower. From this group, the next first enchanter is always chosen. Beneath the council are the enchanters. These are the teachers and mentors of the tower, and you must get to know them in order to keep your finger on the pulse of the circle. For the enchanters will always know what is happening among the children actual children or like just the apprentices who are younger all those who have passed their harrowing but have not taken apprentices are mages this is where most trouble in a circle lies in the idleness and the experience of youth but that's people the untested apprentices are the most numerous denizens of any tower but they often more often pose threats to themselves due to their lack of training than to anyone else well, yeah but that's just with anybody that's with knights in a like barrack or whatever. Good luck getting in. I've been waiting all day. Oh, uh, you've got stands here. Good day, Sir Arthur. Are you the lady from the brothel? Oh, there's so much. Okay, so it's over there, so I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Because I want to get some exploring in before something happens. So many Good luck people. getting in. I've been waiting all day. Well, looks like your chat line. Can we not get over there? Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ignore me. Oh? Let me explore this room first. Seneschal brand. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you. Not going to happen. That's fine. I really don't want to. Is it? The Viscount is suspicious, but the bribe was sufficient to gain access to the restricted section of the archives. The money would have been better spent elsewhere, the archives being almost devoid of Imperium-era records. When the slaves revolted, they hunted magisters and burned the city, at least the parts that could be burned. One account says that the streets were littered with piles of scrolls and books set aflame. No. <laughs> is our quest futile? Did the slaves destroy the answer? As Mafarath's armies toppled the Imperium, they sent three magisters and their legions here. They never arrived, but why march here of all places? What were they coming for? 
behind a panel with curious markings signed the band of three that's cool that makes me glad that we read these now you know okay so we've got this dude oh the lamarin accord we just read about that you sorry lady didn't mean to cut you off Okay, 50 years. It's how long it took the Imperium to drive out the Canari occupation. But the rest of Northern Thetis was not so lucky. Both divines, white and black. Okay, so I think white is for Ferelden and black is for Orlay? Maybe? Declared exalted marches, and for the only time since the schism of the Chantry, they worked together. A century-long siege resulted, and the great Canari entrenched in Antiva and Ravain, and all of Thetis throwing armies against them. The war drained the resources of every nation in Thetis, leaving most on the brink of collapse. To the giants, it did not appear to be the damage to their armada or the loss of their soldiers, but the terrible toll upon the Ravani population that prompted their retreat. That's interesting. When the third new exalted march had all but massacred the people of Kontar without even chipping the Kanari occupying force, the giants finally withdrew. So it's compassion for another group of individuals that had them depart. The treaty that put an official end to the Canary Wars was signed on the politically neutral island of Lomarin off the southern coast of Ravain. 150 years after their assault on the mainland began, the Canari left our shores. They received the northern archipelago in exchange for cessation of hostilities against all the nations on the accord. Only Tevinter refused to sign. Oh, because they're constantly warring. And so the war continues to rage in the Imperium to the present day. It's worth noting, however, that the Kingdom of Ravain immediately violated the treaty. Twice. <laughs> Once when the humans of Northern Ravain, nearly all practitioners of the Kuhn and the Forbidden Kunari, refused to leave their homes and go in exile to the islands. And again, when the Ravain Chantry and Nationalist forces, unable to convert its people back to the worship of the Maker, Try to purge by the sword, slaughtering countless unarmed people and burying them in mass graves. It's a fortunate mystery that the leaders in Kant R did not alert their allies in the Northern Passage, or we'd still be fighting against the giants now. Dude, just just let people be. Man, human beings are the worst sort. Okay, did we go in here? I can't do that. I apparently cannot. The office of the Viscount is not open to the public, especially recent arrivals not actually part of the public. Don't be a douche, dude. All you had to say was, hey, he's not available right now. Good luck getting in. I've been waiting all day. There's no need. So is that the Viscount's actual office? Oh, I can't hover. Okay. So, what is over Good this way? Good luck getting in. I've been waiting all day. That's all you say. So, let's try to find Avalyn. I know she's supposed to be around here somewhere. Hold on, I want to see what's down here first. That's a big door. Your little man on my floor. This is your floor? Carver. It's like what? <laughs> I apologize. I didn't realize just how much reading this was. I guess I must have skipped over so much on Origins. The Divine is the titular head of the Chantry, although since the Schism split the Imperial Chantry into its own faction, they are now in fact two Divines at any one time. Oh good, let's see if I was right. One Divine, informally called the White Divine. Oh no. Wait, oh, where's Minrathus? Is Minrathus to Vinter? One divine informally called the White Divine is a woman housed in the Grand Cathedral in Val Royale, so Orlay. The other, known as the Black Divine, is a man housed in the Arch Spire in Minrathis. Neither divine recognizes the existence of the other. <laughs> and the informal names are considered sacrilegious. No matter the gender, a divine is addressed as Most Holy or Your Perfection. Beneath the rank of divine is the Grand Cleric. Oh, so that lady we just met who was kind of ambiguously rude. Beneath uh, each Grand Cleric presides over numerous chantries and represents the highest religious authority for their religion, a region. They travel to Valrayo when the College of Clerics convenes, but otherwise remains where they are assigned. All Grand Clerics are addressed as Your Grace. 
Beneath her gang, Cleric is the mother, or in the Imperial Chantry, the father. So it is the Imperium. So the Imperium still practices Andrastiasm. So I guess it's just the Imperium and then, like, everything else. It surprises me that Ferelden was to share a, a divine with Harley. Um, if a mother is in charge of a particular chantry, revered is appended to her title. These are the priests responsible for administering to the spiritual well-being of their flock. A mother or revered mother is addressed as your reverence. Brothers and sisters form the rank and file of the chantry and consist of three main groups, affirmed, initiates, and clerics. Affirmed are the lay brethren of the chantry, those regular folk, those regular folk who have turned to the chantry for succor. Often, they are people who have led a difficult or irreligious life and have chosen to go into seclusion, or even orphans or similar unfortunates who are raised into the chantry life. The affirmed take care of the chantry and are in turn afforded a life of quiet contemplation, no questions asked. Now that's nice. That's helping the people. That's what this should be doing. Only those folk who take vows become initiates. These are men and women in training. I wonder if Liliana's taken vows, how she'd be classified in here. These are men and women in training, whether in academic knowledge or in the martial skills of a warrior. All initiates receive an academic education, although only those who seek to become Templars learn how to fight in addition. Clerics are the true academics of the Chantry, those men and women who have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge. They are often found in Chantry archives, sages presiding over libraries of books and arcane knowledge. But I thought you guys hate mages and magic. The most senior of these clerics, placed in charge of such archives, are given the title Elder. Although such rank is still beneath that of Mother, all other brothers and sisters are simply are addressed simply by noting their title before their name, such as Brother Genitivi. I wonder if he wrote this. It just says from a guide, but it doesn't say who the guide was written by. I know this is tedious to have me read here. everything. Okay, we can't go here yet. I know it's tedious to have me read everything, but hopefully it's uh, like educating. It's really cool for me to learn more the about Viscount the particulars. Must be terribly busy. I've been waiting most of the day. Because we the can see how how everyone functions. I've been okay, yeah, I've heard that like three million times now. I'm trying to mouse everything, so I apologize for like I've entered a champion's home base. I have. This is locked. I can't go there. Fine day, sir. Aveline! What is this? Why are you a Templar? Don't be a Templar. Aveline! Hello, Hawk. That's it. What? Oh, right. Sorry. It feels like we just talked. I've been keeping an eye on you. Information is one of the few perks of this job. Watch out for Bartrand. He's a son of a bitch. <laughs> you know I don't like it when you have people watch me. Saved me camping on your doorstep. After what we went through to get here, I... Well, you're no child, but I take care of my friends. The places they have me patrolling, I've got time. I love her freckles. A person in your position. Seems like they might learn some profitable things. You know better than to ask that. One day you'll be frustrated enough to go for it. It's like <laughs> I'm sitting on my hands. There are dangerous people in this city. In fact, I might have a job for you. Let me know if you want to do a favor for Kirkwall. Yeah, sure. Otherwise, I'm here if you need me. Maker knows I could use more satisfying work. Seems like Kirkwall suits you. It has been a challenge. Lots of opportunity. If you're the type the locals want. Yeah. Are you? If you argue enough, you kind of convince yourself. Mm. Oh, why would you miss... Why would you... This must you be a very question? different pace from serving King Kaelin. I love that life. But there's a new king for a new Ferelden. Seems cocksure. But I guess he was there when the Archdemon fell. Can't fault an active hand. It's just one more change, though. The real end for me was Ostagar. What about you, Carver? You were there. 
Do you feel something similar? No. All right then. Oh. Bit of a tit, your brother. <laughs> the blight is over. You could go back to Lothering. That wasn't home for me. It was just where the Horde pressed us. It wasn't the first village I saw fall. But you don't get used to people losing everything. It's not how I wanted to say goodbye. I'll say that. You can't go home again. That's supposed to be about maturity. It's not the same if you don't have the option. I'm gonna ask just because I want to do all the chat options, but this is brutal. This is, this is a friend caring about a friend. It's been a year settling in. Are you all right? You don't need to coddle me. I am where I am. How close I hold my memories is my own business. That's fine, just wanted to make sure you're okay. All right, Aveline. You have something worth doing? My patrols may be empty walks in the dark, but there's something big coming up, and I could use you. An ambush, probably for a caravan. Although I can't find any shipments that match up. Doesn't matter though. I women waiting for someone to rob. I'm putting a stop to it, my district or not. Do you have a name or anything else to go on? Not important. If we show up and they attack, they're bad. Simple as that. I'll wager it's smugglers though. Like I said, seems like an obvious trap for a caravan. You've been nosing around outside your commission. I have contacts, and they're complaining about a lack of meat. Thugs and such. Someone is hiring. And one or two were told to prepare for travelers. You want to be good at this job? You pay attention to what's missing and when people arrange escape routes. I mean, it's wise of her and very observant. Seems like you'd want to share this with your fellow guards. I will, if you sit on your hands. <laughs> I'll send my alerts, and someone else will lead a patrol. But there's profit and influence to be had. You're my friend, so I'm offering. It's considerate of you. I'm no guard, Evelyn. There's only so many of us. Temporary recruits are expected time to time, as long as they're competent. You still claim to be competent, right? <laughs> All right, Evelyn. I'll play guard for you. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> They're hidden up Sundermount, remote and rough, but we can make good time with a shortcut this side. And no, you can't run off and do it without me. I trust you, but I have to be there. You're acting on behalf of the guard. She has such pretty eyes. They're very, very well suited to her hair. Okay, we've got just a little bit more exploring. Another place that wouldn't have me. Let's just go. Oh, I'm sorry, Carver. By all means, lead on. I wish we could have a discussion and be like, I really appreciate everything you do. And you're a good little brother. And very sweet. I'm not gonna take that right in front of them. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> um... We'll probably read that on... Okay, yeah, I'm gonna leave us here so we have stuff to read when we get back. So I don't just drown you guys in all this reading. No, don't get me wrong, it's really interesting. It really is. I'm, I'm glad that somebody, or enough people, were like, Emma, read these. That I actually did take the time to do so. Because it's really, it's really cool. I really like learning about history. I never knew that there were all the different structures to the Chantry. And it's cool getting some insight into, I guess, the lore behind the religion. Um, it's really all very fascinating, and Bioware and the, the developers of TA have put a lot of time and effort into it. And it's well-written. It's, it's nice, so I definitely want to give it a look-see. Okay, guys. So, we'll read about the Fifth Flight, and then the, I think it was the Kirkwall City Guard was the other entry. And then we'll get on our merry little way. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.